Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another screencast by your Earth Science teacher, Mr. Stano. Now, we're going to go into some earthquake problems. We're going to take information from seismograms and try to figure out um, basically either where these earthquakes are, when they've gotten to a location, when they've occurred, or how fast certain components of those waves, ha um, earthquakes have been going. Okay, so I'd like you to open up to your, your reference table to page 11. When you do, you'll see this chart right here. It says a couple of things. First off, earthquake P and S wave travel times. It tells us here's our travel time. Epicenter distance on our x-axis. Something to note about it, it's times 10 to the third or 1,000 kilometers is each part. Travel times in minutes. We can examine more closely the boxes on the bottom, how much they're worth. Notice that we go 0, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, and so on. There are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 boxes in between each major line, making this 1,000 between each interval by the, by five, divided by the 5 boxes, 200. So each one of these little boxes down here is 200 kilometers. We can do the same to figure out what each box is for minutes. So if we go between eight and nine, there's one, two, three boxes. So one minute or 60 seconds divided by the three boxes is 20 seconds. So each box here is 20 seconds. So we go up by each box of 20 seconds. And on the x-axis going across, each box is 200 kilometers. Also looking, notice the P wave right here. It's a little bit lower on the curve because it's faster. Remember, primary waves are faster versus our secondary waves. Okay, now that we've looked at the chart, let's try to work out some problems here. If an observer is 1,000 kilometers away from the epicenter, how long will it take for the P wave to reach the observer? Okay, well, we see that we are 1,000 kilometers away from the epicenter. So we can go down to our bottom, 1,000. We draw a line up to where it hits our primary wave. And in typical fashion, we can go over to the left. And that would be 2 minutes and 20 seconds. That's it. How long will it take the S wave? Well, remember, the S wave is slower, so it should take longer. We continue our line up to where it hits the secondary wave over. So it's four minutes for the S wave to reach the observer. There you go. That's a basic component of using this. We can go a little bit further. We're 4,000 kilometers away from the epicenter of an earthquake. How long will it take for the first P wave? And then for the S wave, typical, so 4,000, up to where it hits the line, over, so seven minutes. How long will it take for the first S wave? So we do the same thing, up to where it hits, over, 12 minutes, 40 seconds. Okay, pretty standard stuff, easy so far. Then we get to a situation like this. A P wave arrives at 12 noon. The first S wave arrives at 12.05. How far away are you from the epicenter? This takes a little bit more work. So remember those times. We have 12 o'clock or noon, 12.05. For the S wave, here's our P wave. These steps are extremely important. You need to write these down. First thing you do, find the difference between the P and S wave arrival times. Okay, so the difference between 12 and 12.05 is five minutes. So here it is, five minutes. We're then gonna take a separate piece of paper, much like we would do with Making profiles, you're going to need a separate sheet of paper, and we're going to notch off five minutes 
on the y-axis travel time. So here, I have my little marker. I went here, put my paper up. Okay, it marks five minutes. You need to be precise when doing this. Then what you're gonna do is transfer your piece of paper to the space between the PNES waves on the graph where both lines touch that mark. So we're gonna take this, you transpose it up, and you'll see that it hits here and here. Once we know where that line or those two marks hit the P and the S waves, we draw a line down and we get about 4,000 kilometers. Depending on how precise you are with this, you may get a little bit different answer than someone else. You may get 3,800, 3,900, 4,100. It's okay to be a little bit different than the next person, but you need to be consistent with your steps. So in that case, we're 4,000 kilometers away with a five minute difference between the travel times. Now, a little bit different, suppose we are six minutes away. So we do the same thing we did before. We gave, they gave us the difference. We mark it on our paper. We transpose it to where it hits both, mark, both lines, draw the line down, and here we get 4,600 kilometers. I would try doing this on your own to make sure that you can also get it. That is the basics of page 11. We're going to go a little bit more in depth with it, but that's it. So I'm going to show you some quick pictures of some earthquake damage. As you can see here, some nice uh, steel railroad tracks getting uh, bent up. Another uh, more damage to our roadways. Pretty susceptible to this. Okay, this is Alaska 2002. Same thing. Houses falling, more roadways falling apart. Uh, buildings crumbling, you know, very typical of what we would see in an earthquake going through. Transformers blowing up with possible natural gas. I mean, bridges collapsing going through. Definitely some uh, earthquakes pose a number of issues going through. Pretty cool stuff, which leads us to earthquake prevention. Well, I guess it's not cool if you're in it. Some tips, strap hot uh, water heater to the wall. You don't want that tipping over, uh, burning anyone. Anchor heavy bookcases and file cabinets to the wall. If you look on the back of a bookcase, you'll see these, these little metal tabs. Those are usually meant to screw into a wall so they don't fall over. Place heavy objects on lower shelves. You don't want them falling on you. Anchor overhead lights, heavy artworks and mirrors, and anchor top, top heavy objects. For yourself, you wanna stay in the strongest part of the house, a doorway, or under very sturdy furniture. And that's it. Hope you enjoyed it. Take care.